In this video, we're going to be talking about plant cloning. I have to say, I reckon plant cloning has got to be one of the easiest topics. Next, we're going to try and move on to animal cloning. I'm going to try and work through the whole biotechnology unit for all of you guys. But yeah, so this is this plant cloning part is the first two pages of this topic, and it's easy. So, a clone is something that is genetically identical. Well, obviously, a cloning, like non-science could mean anything the same but in biology a2 you have to say genetically identical and in nature clones asexually reproduce so there are a few benefits to asexual reproduction the first being that it is quite quick you can rapidly reproduce and produce large numbers of offspring the next one is completed without a mate if you can't find a mate or if you just sexually are unable to physically breed you can then sexually repro you can then asexually reproduce sorry so have offspring without your mate and also that means if you're surviving well in your environment that technically means all your offspring if they're going to have the same genes as you they should be able to perfectly survive as well so the only really disadvantage is there's no genetic variety between a parent and offspring if they're all exactly the same if the parent is susceptible to changing the environment, it could be a disease, that means all the offspring are also going to be equally susceptible. So, in nature, it's done by vegetative propagation. What we've got here is our English elm tree. So when this English elm tree asexually reproduces, little root suckers or basal sprouts, as they're known, they're basically mini versions of this tree, pop up in a circle shape around the English elm tree. This is known as a clonal patch, and these root suckers are genetically identical to the original tree. So, a question could come up saying, how do you, well not exactly, obviously in these exact words, but essentially how do you make basil sprouts grow? How do you get your English elm tree to asexually reproduce? So the first thing you can do is damaging the trunk. Taking a bit of the trunk out or having to stab it will eventually cause this tree to get worried and produce these basal sprouts. The next one is cutting the trunk. So essentially actually chopping the tree uh, down at the trunk level uh, will also do the same thing. Or stressing the tree. Just removing the water from the environment so it can't take up any water from the soil. This makes the tree think it's going to die. Time to reproduce. Bam. And it does it. So you've seen how in nature... Uh, you get natural vegetative propagation. So now we're going to talk about artificially doing it. Humans editing plants to allow them to do this. So the first one we're going to talk about is taking cuttings. What happens is a section of the stem is cut in between the leaf joints, the leaf nodes of, uh, of a plant. This can then be treated with root hormones and then planted to encourage growth. Over time, if you keep and keep doing this, you'll just be getting clones and more clones uh, genetically identical of the same original plant. The next method is known as grafting. So as you can see here, I've got my apple tree producing apples. However, I've got a different tree uh, known as a rootstock, and I want this to produce apples as well. However, it can't because it's not an apple tree. So it involves cutting a branch and essentially joining it to this other tree. The other tree is known as a rootstock. So uh, the new branch in the rootstock and the original apple tree are genetically identical, however the rootstock and the apple tree aren't. Ok, so next I'm going to talk about the steps of micropropagation. This is basically the, the human, the artificial way of producing a mega load of plants uh, all at once. So, using clean sterile forceps, what happens is some cells are taken, a bit of tissue is taken from the top of a plant. This is known as the explant. So these cells are then placed on a nutrient growth medium in which they, they divide, but they don't specifically differentiate yet. So these are known as callus cells at the minute. So after a couple of weeks, the callus cells are then transferred to another growth medium, but this time with shoot growth hormones, so hormones that promote the growth of the shoot, making little shoots form. A few weeks later, once again, a new growth medium they're transferred to, this time with root growth hormone promoting the growth of roots. So therefore, you've now got these little shoots that are then growing roots. So, these little half-grown shoot root plant things you've then got going on are then transferred to the greenhouse. Uh, and in this greenhouse, they acclimatise, they're given carbon dioxide, methane burners, sunlight, things like this, to get used to the, uh, the actual environment rather than being on a nutrient growth medium. Then after this, they are then taken uh, to the farmer's field and they are all grown. So, I'm going to go over that again in case you didn't get that. 
cells are taken from the top of a plant. This is known as the explant. So, okay, so you've got the little cells on the explant. They're placed in your first nutrient growth medium, which is just a basic nutrient growth medium. It's not root, it's not shoot, it's no no hormones, just, just uh, a growth medium that will get the cells going into tiny little plants. So, this forms a mass of cells called a callus. These cells have divided, but they're not undifferentiated yet. The callus cells are then obviously placed in a shoot, growth hormones to get the shoots growing then transferred to root growth hormones to get the roots going which are then transferred to a greenhouse to acclimatize and to grow before being transferred to the farmers field so there are a few benefits to this the first being that farmers know what crop is going to be produced if they're all identical they can tell exactly what it's going to be like and the farmers costs are reduced because if it is genetically identical which it is they should technically grow at the exact same rate provided they're given the same amount of nutrients so they'll all be ready for harvest in the field at the same time